Good morning, students. Welcome back. In the last lesson, we learned about the different processes such as the melting, boiling, freezing, condensing, which is known as condensation. Today, we're going to study a heating curve. We're going to look at where these processes are on a heating curve. Now, for a heating curve, right, as you can see in this graph over here, that is your heating curve. For a heating curve, the temperature rises with time, which means to say you are heating a substance, and on your graph, you should see the temperature increase. Now, let's look at the different parts of the curve. First, we need to look at the melting point. Okay, for substances below melting point, it will be in a solid state. Above the melting point, it will be the liquid. And when it's above the boiling point, it will exist as a gas. Now let's take a look at the different arrangement. Now let's use the solid state example. You can see that the particles on the left, they are vibrating in fixed positions. Now what about liquid? For the liquid state, right, the particles are sliding freely and randomly around one another. And for gases, the particles are moving freely and randomly at all directions at high speeds. All right, let's move on next. Now let's look at the heating curve again. Okay, uh, this diagram is found in your notes. As you can see, it is the graph of temperature against time. We need to look at some features on this graph. All right, first we need to identify the melting point and the boiling point. Okay, so when we see the flat parts of the graph, okay, flat parts of the graph. We know that there is a process happening. In this case, the one that is lower temperature, it has to be your melting point, and the one that is a higher temperature, it is your boiling point. Alright. So that will be what's happening at part B. And for part D, that will be boiling. For the temperature here below the melting point, remember that it is solid state. Okay, so please enter solid as the answer. Now moving on, okay, remember that above the melting point in the previous slide, the animation will show you that it is in the liquid state. And now above boiling, above boiling, it has to be in the state of a gas. All right, now coming back to part B, okay. As we know for part B, it is melting, right? You wrote this down here, it's melting. Now what happens during melting is the solid is slowly changing to the liquid state. Now it is slowly changing to liquid state, it doesn't change instantly. That means at part B, there are actually two states. It is a mixture of solid and liquid. Okay, now what about part D? Boiling is happening over here. Remember this is the liquid state L. And then this is the gaseous state G. So what do you think is the state in between? It has to be a mixture too, right? So it will be the liquid and gaseous state, liquid and gas. All right, now let's take a look at a short animation. Okay, let us imagine that there is a block of ice in a beaker at negative 30 degrees Celsius. Now let us be very clear, the melting point of ice is 0 degrees Celsius, right? It exists as a solid, and that is what you see on the diagram on the right, okay? Now what happens if we increase the temperature? I'm going to increase the temperature, I'm going to light the Bunsen burner, and you can see at the bottom here, this part, this is your heating curve, the temperature is rising, right? It will keep rising and rising and rising. The solid particles will vibrate more vigorously because they have more heat energy now. And you start to see that the particles will vibrate even more vigorously. And I'm going to increase the heat further, further and further. Until you see, at this point, the graph is leveling off. It's starting to become a flat part of the graph. The temperature is becoming constant. All right. So, and you can see on the right-hand side, you are getting a mixture of liquid and solid. Now, let's heat the substance a bit more. Okay. Temperature is leveling off. Now it is a liquid. Let's heat it some more. All right. You can see the temperature rise, rise, and rise. Okay. The liquid particles start to slide freely and randomly around one another, and it does so at a faster speed. Okay. Let's heat it up even more. Okay. As you can see, once again, the graph starts to level off. 
And at this point where it's starting to level off and it has already leveled off, what you get is a mixture of liquid and gas. Okay, let's heat it up some more. Okay, now once all the liquid has been converted to a gas, we will only have the substance in the gaseous state. Okay, let's look at this question. Okay, this MCQ question. Now, first couple of things we need to take note of is you are given a solid. If I'm given a solid, that means at the starting temperature, my X is a solid. I'm just going to write it down here. Okay, X is a solid and it's heated. So what I have here is a heating curve where the temperature rises. Okay, now let's check. If this is a solid, there's a process happening here. Okay the flat portion of the curve where the temperature remains constant this has to be the melting point and once i hit the solid the solid melts it will become a liquid okay so what statements are true x melts at zero degrees celsius um, that is not true because zero degrees celsius is here so that is a false statement okay so the melting point is more than zero degrees celsius Okay, statement two, it says, it takes about seven minutes for X to melt completely. X start melting, it starts to melt at nine, the ninth minute, and melting ends at the 16th minute. Um, total timing is seven minutes. The duration is indeed seven minutes, and therefore that is a true statement. Now, this says the temperature remains constant when X melts. That is true because when we look at the flat portion of the graph, this is where melting takes place. The temperature is indeed constant. So 2 and 3 are correct. The answer has to be B. Now, next, let's take a look at this graph. Okay, this is what you have in your notes. We can see we are given a block of ice, which means this is a solid, and it's heated starting from 25 degrees Celsius. What this tells me is at the starting, part of the experiment, I'm given ice. If I'm given ice, this must be a solid. And the melting occurs here. The ice will start melting at B and melting ends at C. So what happens is at C, we will only have liquid. C to D will only be a liquid. Remember, you have solid from the start. You have liquid from C to D. So what happens from D to E? There is a process, right? It is called boiling. This is the boiling point. And boiling starts at D. It finishes at point E. Point E here finishes here. And from E to F, there is only the gaseous state because all of the liquid has been converted to a gas. Okay, from here, solid to liquid and then liquid to gas. Okay. Now let me clean this up a bit. Okay. So what we have here is solid, liquid, and gas. Now in between here, B to C, what is the state? Remember it is a mixture. It is a solid and liquid state. Over here for boiling, it is in between the liquid and gaseous state, right? So it will be a mixture of two states, and that will be your liquid and your gas. So after clearing this up, let me show you all the labels. Now pause if you need to. Okay, I will suggest you take these labels down because we help you identify and remember what the states are. Solid, liquid, okay, gas, and the ones in green are a mixture of two states. Okay, please be very careful. Please continue to refer to the graph. Alright. Now at point A to B. Okay, remember it is a solid, right? But you are still heating up the solid. So as the substance gains energy, the particles have more energy and therefore it will start to vibrate faster. In a way, it starts to move faster. But solid particles can only vibrate, right? So it can only vibrate faster. Okay, so what about B to C? That is the flat part of the graph. And what happens is melting, right? That is a melting point. During the melting point, there is a mixture of solid and liquid states, a mixture of two states. 
But bear in mind, you are still heating the substance. You are heating the substance, but why is it that the temperature remains 0 degrees Celsius? Why is it that it remains constant? There must be a reason for it, right? Okay, so what happens is during melting, right, the particles here, okay, I would suggest that you use a highlighter and I highlight what I underline. The particles will gain energy, and what this energy does is to overcome the very strong attractive forces. Okay, why is it very strong? Because during melting, the solid changes state to become a liquid, and for the solid, right, the particles are held together very strongly by very strong attractive forces okay so the solid particles are in fixed position and as they gain more energy they begin to be able to slide more freely randomly and slide past one another okay that is what happens during melting itself um, i'm putting a star here because this is quite an important concept that you need to know all right moving on next so as i've mentioned you are continuously heating the substance why is it that the temperature remains constant the temperature remains constant during the melting because the heat energy that you supply is being absorbed to overcome the very strong attractive forces in a solid remember that at the start the solid particles can only be held in their fixed positions they can only vibrate now once the attractive forces are overcome then they start to be able to move freely and randomly and they also be able to slide past one another okay i know it's a bit complicated huh? pause the video if you need to rewind if you need to all right now next from zero degrees to 100 degrees celsius right the substance is in a liquid state so since the particles are in a liquid state they can only slide around one another but they will do so faster because now they have more energy okay next when we continue to heat the substance and at boiling point at 100 degrees celsius okay for water the substance is boiling right okay boiling and at the boiling point and during boiling there is a mixture of two states liquid and gas that is why the bottom part of the diagram that is drawn particles are shown in the liquid state and at the top part of the diagram the particles are in the gaseous state okay now the reason is pretty similar to what happens during melting whereby the liquid will gain energy and it will overcome overcome the strong attractive forces now why is the keyword used here strong instead of very strong because at the boiling point liquid becomes gas and the liquid particles are held by strong attractive forces whereas in a solid it is held by very strong attractive forces that is a difference okay so once we overcome the attractive forces the strong attractive forces the particles now begin to move freely and randomly and high speeds because the substance now becomes a gas okay why is it that the temperature remains constant it does so because the energy that is absorbed heat energy absorbed is used to overcome the strong attractive forces holding the liquid and once these strong attractive forces are overcome they will be able to move like a gas and that is why and when we get a change in state okay now what about the temperatures above boiling point above boiling point the substance remains as a gas but remember, you are still heating the substance. At higher temperature, it has even more energy. It will move even faster. Pause the video if you need to. Okay, if you need to rewind and listen to the explanation again, please do so. Okay, now moving on. Let me clear everything from this page so that it's a bit easier for you to read. There are two main takeaways from this slide. First, the temperature remains constant for pure substance. Secondly, during melting and boiling, which is the process where a change in state happens, there is a mixture of two states. Okay? So please be very careful. If you are asked to draw a diagram during boiling or during melting, please make sure you draw two states in your diagram. If you are asked to name 
what are the states that are present during melting and boiling? Please make sure you have both answers. Okay, let's move on. Okay, now for this question, right? Once you see this diagram, let's pick out the important information. First, we need to pick the state. And this tells us that at 20 degrees Celsius, this is a liquid state. All right. Now, if this is a liquid state, this part is a horizontal line. It is a constant temperature. Constant temperature. This means to say this has to be boiling. Okay, boiling must occur, and this is the boiling point, and this must be the gaseous state. And in between liquid and gaseous state, this must be a mixture of liquid and gas. Okay, let me clear this up so that you can have a better look at the full version. Okay. Now, so what is the boiling point of this substance? It has to be 80 degrees since we have identified 80 degrees as the boiling point. Now, the physical states for P and Q is liquid, liquid and gas, and finally gas. So, the point that I would like everyone to know is once you are able to annotate your graph correctly, accurately, the questions are really easy to answer. Okay, nothing to worry about. So why is it that temperature remains constant? Um, can you still remember the answer? Okay, let's look at Q and R. Q and R boiling happens, right? It's from the liquid state to the gaseous state. So the energy is used to overcome the strong forces of attraction. And it is strong because the particles in the liquid state are attracted by strong forces of attraction. Okay, and at this point in time, the temperature does not rise, so it is done without increasing the temperature. Please make a change. Uh, this is a one mark question, and this is a one mark answer instead of it being two marks. Now, next question, it asks you to describe the arrangement and movement. You notice that this is a two mark question, right? So the first mark must be for arrangement, and the second for movement. The question says PQ. So at PQ, you will see that it is in the liquid state. So you need to describe the arrangement of the particles in the liquid state and the movement of particles in the liquid state. Okay, so how are particles in the liquid state arranged? Closely packed, irregular arrangement. Please be very careful. Huh? We need these two key points in order for you to get the full one mark. Okay, what about the movement? They move freely, move freely, and they also slide past one another. Please be very careful. You need to have two points in order to get one mark. Okay, so altogether four points. So that's all for the heating curve. Okay, so just some general reminders. Once you have a graph, please try to identify the states. Okay, the states and also identify the process that's happening. Once you're able to do so, it is quite simple to answer the questions. Next. You need to know the reason why temperature remains constant. The keywords are in red and also in blue. And next, you also need to know the keywords to describe number one, the arrangement. Number two, the movement of particles in all three states, solid, liquid, and gas. Okay, if you are able to do so, this chapter should be quite simple for you and not a problem. All right, that's all. See you guys for next lesson. Bye-bye.